Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> Welcome, everybody. Um, my name is Joanne Curvis, and I'm the board chair of Longmont Creates, which is the nonprofit arm of the Creative District. And we host the Creative Happy Hours. We do them quarterly, and uh, we want to thank Longmont Public Media and Sound Post Sessions. Longmont Public Media, Sound Post Sessions Woo! for um, hosting here. And um, they kind of took the lead, and they're going to tell you all about the great things that happen here. Um, but we do these quarterly so that our creatives can get out and meet and mingle and find all the cool things that are going on in Longmont. Um, the Creative District is run by the Longmont Downtown Development Authority and has very specific um, word, God, footprint, thank you. This is going to be a joint project. Um, and so what they can only advertise and fund things within the Creative District boundaries. Um, Longmont Creates is a nonprofit. We support everything that's going on in the Creative District, but we're open to supporting all of the creatives in Longmont. So that's kind of the benefit of having a nonprofit arm. And also, as we continue to grow, our ultimate goal is to be raising money um, for the creative district um, activities, creatives, all kinds of things. Um, out on the table, you can find information about us. And if you want to become a member, like if you're jealous, because some people have really cute name charts, oh, <laughs> then if you join, you'll get to make one as well. Um, we have a pay it forward membership. It's $35 a year. And if you participate in five qualifying activities throughout the year, one of which is a creative happy hour, then when you go to renew that next year, your membership is $0 mm -hmm. because we want our creatives involved. Sure, we want your money. You can still give us the $35, but we want to see your faces. We want you here. We want to hear from you. We want to know what you guys need. So um, that's how we do our pay it forward. So I'm going to stop talking and turn it over. If you have any questions, I'm here all night. Thanks, Joanne. Hi, everyone. My name is Tim Goldsrud. I'm the executive producer of the Sound Post Sessions, which is a concert series that we uh, host right here at LPM. And um, also, we, we do some shows over at the Times Collaborative over on Main Street. Um, I'm really excited to be here tonight to um, have a little, host a little bit of conversation with some creatives in our community. Um, as I've been involved in the creative district uh, for a little while now, um, the question has, some of our conversations on the advisory committee have been around, well, what is a creative, you know? Is it just an artist? You know, what what does being a creative mean? So I thought this might be an an, an interesting opportunity to um, talk about that and um, what talk about what it means to be a creative um, and the idea that maybe the um, that definition is actually pretty wide and maybe more of us are creatives than we might even think. Um, but also, we want to talk a little bit specifically about Longmont Public Media, the place where, where we are. I've been a member here myself for um, almost two years now, and um, so we want to talk about a little bit about that, and there'll be a chance later on to see more about the facility um, and um, to around the spaces and whatnot. But we also want to um, have a chance to have some conversation about how we use the space here to give you an all, all a better idea of that. So tonight we have three stellar members, stellar creatives from our community here tonight. We have, starting on stage right there, Sarah Morrow, who is a Longmont real estate professional with Cell State Ace Realty. And she's also a singer, a mandolin player, and a songwriter. So I think you'll, you're going to realize that multi-talented is sort of a theme for tonight. Um, next, we have Amanda Maldonado, who's an artist, graphic designer, and teacher and known, known as Koi Inc. And then also Karina Bulch, who's the director of artistic and digital strategy for the Sound Post Sessions. And she's also a freelance writer and musician. So um, to start us off, Sarah. Hi, Tim. Hi. Um, tell us a little bit about the sort of creative activities that you're involved in generally. 
Uh, all right, I have been a member of the Longmont Public Media Center here that we're in for coming up on three years. Um, my primary, at least my consistent project is I host a, I host a little pun of a show called Proper Tea Time. We talk about property and we sip proper tea from our little tea set here, my prop. Um, I confess I'm drinking water because I've overdone the tea already today. But I, um, that's something I do monthly. Uh, I'm also a singer, songwriter, actor, you know, I'm, I'm involved in a lot of musical theater and even some opera and some like gigs around town, but those are projects that are kind of short term. Um, and I'm a realtor full time and kind of longer term. And I really just love LPM because I've produced my show here. I just finished my 23rd episode last week in terms of um, content production. And when I first came here three years ago, I didn't even know what Adobe Premiere meant. <laughs> so I've um, I've come a long way with um, with regard to hosting a show. And what does Adobe? And, sorry, Adobe, Adobe Premiere, Premiere is just a piece yeah. of software with which I you know have video made, made my videos. Yes, um, but I do a little teaser teaser. And then I do my little episode about property with various uh, talking head, like it's an interview show. It's just like a 20 minute discussion about sort of what helps people buy and sell property, some, um, some anecdotal things in my show. So anyways, that's a long answer for a short session, sorry, but I am a, yeah, I'm a video editor here and a video uh, content producer. Well, one of the things that I think is so interesting about that project you have is the interface to your professional activities, which I'm going to come back to in a minute. Ooh, I, I wait with bated breath. <laughs> Karina, let's move over to you. Tell us a little bit about the sort of creative activities that you are involved in. Creative activities that I'm involved in. Well, I have been a professional musician, singer, also a singer-songwriter uh, for, I guess, coming on 17 years now. I have a degree in jazz studies. And... Um, I started a record label a few years back, and during the pandemic, I started writing prose for such publications as Dallas Observer. Uh, there's a music blog out of New York called The Wild Honey Pie that I started writing for. And um, more recently, I was an intern with 5280 Magazine, and I'm still working with them. And um, and then more recently than that, I started writing for Travel Boulder. So I'm also a music, arts, culture, service journalism writer. And um, also the director of artistic and digital strategies with the Soundpost Sessions for... She does a great job doing that, but... <laughs> wow. For, I guess, over a year now, coming on a year and a half. And um, with the Soundpost Sessions, I help... Uh, plan and produce some of our shows. We launched a jazz series last year called Jazz at the Times at the Times Collaborative and uh, also become kind of the de facto house singer for that series. So I've been um, back singing jazz after the pandemic after a break so that has felt really good. And I also write and edit the Sound Post which is our monthly newsletter which talks about the artists that play at our shows, and also the music industry at large. And uh, is that it? Is that, is a, that all? I am an amateur <laughs> watercolor <laughs> painter. <laughs> and uh, and um, although I'm not a visual artist by any stretch, I'm very interested in visual artistic things. And so sometimes I take Amanda's classes. Yeah. De definitely a, a plug there for the the, um, the sound post, which is the blog she writes for us in the sound post sessions. Um, if you haven't had a chance to check that out, you can find that on our website. Um, but um, Amanda, let's jump to you. Tell us a little bit about the many things that you do. A lot. <laughs> um, I'm Koi Inc. This is my logo. It's an owl. Um, so. A lot of people who recognize me in Longmont but don't know me know me from my, my owl logo or my blue hair, which is kind of hard to see in the bun. Um, so I do a lot of things. I teach art classes. I teach a business class for artists at the firehouse every month. Um, I'm doing four free art lessons this year to make it more open to people who uh, don't have expendable income like I do not right now. Um, and uh, just trying to nurture creativity um, and help people feel good about being creative because it can be a very painful process um, getting back to where it feels good again. Um, and I try to do it in very subtle, gentle ways so they don't know you're like, 
Oh, this is actually fun. <laughs> Um, so I do watercolor and pen and ink. Um, I'm also a creative and community liaison. I try to bring everybody together. Um, I was just telling someone earlier that I brought the chamber to the firehouse. And I'm like, we're all going to be friends because we're all really dorky and um, love what we do. So um, yeah, just make art, have fun, go on art dates. Um, I'm very inspired by the creative community here and by uh, how much this feels like home to me and how much of a family it's become um, and how much people are like, you want to do that? Let's do it. That sounds great. Go go have fun. Go, go make things happen. So um, yeah, I'm just very inspired by Longmont and the creatives and how much energy and passion we have. Um, and I love inspiring that in people and and encouraging them to to feel good and have fun so i uh, one of the other things that i've really admired seeing you do recently is i, I saw you had a uh, a ribbon cutting for your for your business koi inc right yep a it was recently like the best and attended i've <laughs> ever seen a ribbon cutting be yeah. we uh, had a head count of 67 people that's Which great, I yeah. was very, and this was July 12th when no one wants to leave their house. They're like, what is existing? January 12th. January, yeah, thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Jace. <laughs> yeah, everyone's on vacation on July 12th. <laughs> anyway. Well, but uh, I think this connection to business and our professional lives is another thing that I want to um, talk about a little bit. I know for for me, there's a lot of overlap between the consulting work that I do professionally and uh, audio engineering work that I do. And um, I really enjoy having a place like this where I can um, exercise some of the more creative aspects of being a sound engineer, you know, how to make things sound good, you know, H how do I EQ this guitar or something to, um, to get it sounding just right. Um, but also, I think the Creative District is a really great platform for us to not just be creatives or, you know, working in a bubble, but actually using these creative, developing these creative skills in ways that, pro, you know, help us professionally and help us make money, right? Um, so, Sarah, I want to come back to you. Um, how, how does being a creative kind of influence you professionally? So I'm not in this organization and I'm not a creative, so I just want to put that out there right now because I'm kind of got a little imposter syndrome going on. But um, now that I know you exist, $35 a year sounds pretty good and doable. Um, sorry, what was the question? <laughs> you know, like, well, I, I know that your, um, your proper tea time uh -huh. you know, is, is definitely connected to your real estate activities, right? So I'm just kind of curious how the... Um, how how that how you, how did you how did you come come about to how did you have the idea gotcha. to make that to start gotcha. that series what kind of inspired that it's a good question so i first of all i love puns <laughs> and um i love talking to people and i you know all these sales gurus are like content content video video future of marketing um, and really, as, you're, as a realtor, you got to be good at marketing, you know, and I didn't want to just, you know, bombard people with Facebook ads, and I didn't want to just, I don't know, be a singer and be like, hey, I'm also a realtor, like, don't you want to buy or sell a house? Because everyone I was meeting in the music scene, you know, they don't buy houses. Um, but <laughs> I, <laughs> I, um, I don't know how it happened. I, I learned about Longmont Public Media. I think I just Googled video. I, I wanted to learn how to create short videos for like my Insta reel, to be honest. I just wanted to find a way to get good with video. I was an audio engineer for a little while. You know, I, I learned Pro Tools. I can I can do what, what Tim does, um, not quite nearly as well as Tim, but I kind of knew about audio and music um, editing. But suddenly everyone's like, you got to produce video content if you want to be a good realtor. And so I was like, all right, let me learn how to do this. And I just needed support, so I found LPM sort of from a marketing, you know, wanting to do local marketing in Longmont. So I really lucked into this place. Um, and then once I started it, you know, once you, once you generate an idea and you're willing to put in the time, which I was, 
um, <clears throat> people people kind of helped me <laughs> out of total necessity. I was like, can you just get my lighting better? And can you just show me this? And it's been, you know, it, over the course of three years, I finally figured a lot of things out. And I got good, if you will. But in the beginning, it was just kind of like you said, it was like this idea. And all I wanted was to have a monthly something in my YouTube channel, basically. So it just sort of unfolded. And I thought it would be easier than it was. But now I, now I do. I have a monthly thing on my YouTube channel. And uh, there was a lot of learning that had to happen. But I love talking to people. I love producing content. I love LPM. And I stick with it because I just, it's all my favorite stuff. Being in front of a camera, you know, being in front of people, talking about property, geeking out about certain topics like title and escrow and inspections. And I just, I, I enjoy it. You know, I, I stuck with it because I enjoy it. Well, I, I, I would, for one, would say you're definitely creative. Thank you. And, uh, <laughs> and I, ad I admire your ability to kind of use your creative skills, you know, in, in a way that really reinforces and helps your business. You know, so I think that's, that's great. Uh, Karina, let's jump, jump back over to Thank you. you. Um, how do you feel like being a creative influences you professionally? Well, being a creative is really my whole life. I have always been into performing and singing since I was a kid, and, and then that's why I went on to get a music degree. And before the pandemic, I was working um, a corporate job at um, the fashion company Fossil. And it was a cool job, and it was fun to work in fashion for a while. But um, after a while, I just didn't feel creatively fulfilled and um, made the decision to step away from that job to pursue my full-time creative career. And then the pandemic happened and kind of screwed that all up. So that kind of forced me to um, readdress, you know, like what, what are my skills? What can I do professionally? And that's how I got into writing. And uh, I guess I'm still trying to figure out the answer to that question. <laughs> what do I do next? Um, I'm freelancing like crazy, but I, I need to find a home. I need to find a place where I can use all my creative skills and also make an income and hopefully buy a house someday. You know how to I find knew, me. I know. I knew a good uh, real estate agent. Cool. <laughs> All set. Amanda, I mean, I, I've always really admired your kind of marrying of the creative industries, if we call it that, and kind of your professional life. Tell us a little bit more about how it works for you. Um, yeah, they're so interconnected. Um, I started off as a um, graphic designer. I went to college uh, to study art and. Um, with a determination to figure out how am I going to make a living doing something creative. Um, and when I succeeded at that, I, um, after moving to Longmont, um, fell in love with the city and felt really called to the community and the connection that I felt here and wanting to contribute and give more of myself and my time to that, which is why I started um, Koyang Studio, which is the, um, the business name for uh, what I do full-time self-employed work. Um, but yeah, I guess it's always stemmed from a love of giving back, teaching, um, being around community. Um, and the reason why I wanted to do, I'm not doing them now, but the marketing classes was just wanting to elevate and uplift some of the really cool businesses in Longmont, giving artists and businesses the opportunities and advantages that I have as a creative um, graphic designer and knowing the marketing field. So, um, so th these are the marketing classes that you offer around town, right? Mm -hmm. I, I haven't taken one myself. I think, I think maybe you did, Karina, right? Tell us a little bit more about those marketing classes yeah. you're doing. Um, I'm not doing them anymore. Okay. Yeah, I'm taking a you break. You can still I was tell, just gonna us. Sign up. tell us about the ones <laughs> you did. <laughs> Um, so basically trying to help businesses with um, how to use social media in a way that is rewarding 
and not draining. So um, there are small businesses in town that I am in love with and they don't respond to me when I post things on Instagram and it makes me really sad. And um, it's- I, I hope I respond to those things. Yeah, too, you think. and Corinna both okay. respond. <laughs> But um, like I'll go to a coffee shop or I'll go to a business and I, I'll, I'll do an illustration um, and take a photo of the illustration that I made while I was hanging out there and um, they may not see it because they're not checking their social media as much. And um, what I was hoping to cultivate is helping remind businesses why they started this in the first place, why they became self-employed and did something super exhausting and a huge uphill battle and that there are people who really uh, connect and engage with them and um, want to feel that human connection with that business through your social media is an easy way to see behind the scenes what they're getting up to and um, feel like there's someone behind this and you can be like, I love you, you're amazing. Um, I want to support you. I want to tell other people about you, but you're not on Instagram and I can't. I took photos and I just I put the location on there, but no one's going to click on that. So, <laughs> yeah, just trying to show businesses that it can be something that feels good if you stop worrying about what you have to do and do what what might be kind of fun. What? How can you hang out with the people that you started this for in the first place? Well, let us know when you decide to start <laughs> these back up again. I feel like this is really useful and valuable yeah, thank information. You. So, yeah. Well, let, let's change gears for a little bit and talk a little bit more about this specific place, Longmont Public Media. Um, Sarah, you mentioned coming in and um, not really knowing a lot about video no. uh, editing there some, in particular. <laughs> there's some witnesses to that. <laughs> Um, tell us a little bit more about the, maybe some of the specifics of the of video resources you utilize here. Sure, uh, <laughs> I kind of I kind of compare my my learning journey here to like you know throwing a toddler into a swimming pool so they can learn how to swim. I definitely bit off a lot more than I can chew. I strolled in here like, yeah, you know, I'm gonna do an episode and I'm gonna like have content every week and. I realized pretty quick that I was too big for my britches because there was this guy who was here who was like, I'll do all your editing, I'll do your producing. I was like, fabulous. Did my first episode. He spent like three hours editing it. He made me this beautiful intro. He made me these beautiful credits. And then like a week after it was done, and I was like, I want to like hire you. Like this is beautiful. I want to just have this template. I want your help. He said he'd teach me stuff. He like decided to just completely leave LPM and go become a tattoo artist and like follow his passion. And I was like, oh my, and he just sent me a couple of stems and was like, here you go. You can work with this and you can see what I did and do it yourself. And I was like, oh my God. Like I was so freaked out. I was just, it was, he had done some really advanced stuff in After Effects and imported it into Premiere and thought that I could like figure this out. I'm like, I have an opera degree. Like I, I, I wanna be in front of the camera. Like you were gonna help me do this. And so I just, I, I remember feeling really betrayed at first. I mean, happy for him, but I kind of wished, it would have been better if I had just created it from scratch myself. But instead I had to figure out what somebody else did, which forced me to learn a lot in the editing portion of things, like in a short period of time, so that my second episode, so that I wasn't just doing one episode and then being like, I can't do this. So I, I just, I, yeah, it took me a good five or six or seven more episodes to then figure out what he had done and then do it myself, but I was determined to do that. So do you do all the editing yourself now? Yes, and okay. I'm to the point, finally, <laughs> you're welcome, you guys, and thank you for everything. <laughs> like, after 20 episodes, I can come in. I even came in on that day that was like 17 below zero when not a soul was here, and I not only like did my own lights, my own cameras, my own multi-tracking, my own audio, I can set up this space, I do my episode, and then I go in the other room and I completely edit it fully, all of it, audio, color correction, totally alone. One and of the nice things about 24-7 member access, yes. by the way. Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, I'm here sometimes at like 1 o'clock in the morning. But like I, that was a really big win for me. I know it sounds kind of like, well, yeah, you, you come and you produce content. But you got to understand that like I had a lot of help from the staff 
from some hired guns, from YouTube, from, you know, just so, m the resources were here, but I was hungry for it. You have to be like annoying. I'm good at being annoying until I learn what needs to be learned to get to make it happen. Tenacious. Tenacious. Not annoying. My, my slogan as a realtor is let my tenacity move you. Puns, all puns. Um, but yes, I, I, do, I, do, I do kind of pride myself in being tenacious and learning. This is a great place to learn, but you do have to kind of, people are like, maybe I'll join LPM so they can produce content for me. I'm like, doesn't work that way. Yeah, you really, it's a great place to learn. It I've, is. It's been my experience as if well. If you take the initiative, like yeah. any maker space, um, all the tools you need are here. Bounce that back to you, Amanda. I mean, what, what sort of resources have you taken advantage of here at LPM? Um, I've used the iPad for sales and markets. Excellent. There, <laughs> are, there are multiple so iPads. It doesn't even. work with, uh, yeah. <laughs> with Square anymore. Um, so I love coming in here and teaching classes on Adobe programs. Um, so artists and businesses can learn how to do um, some basic marketing things, um, how to use Illustrator, Photoshop, um, and InDesign. And I've also brought in um, one of my close friends uh, hired me to teach her how to use Illustrator, uh, Photoshop, and this flatbed scanner to take her artwork and to turn it into um, cards. And some of that involves taking um, some hand lettering that you do separately, the art itself, and then compositing it together into Photoshop for a finished piece, how to take the um, the white of the paper and make it a pure white so you don't see like the dirty paper grain, which can be um, really sad because usually the printer makes it a lot darker <laughs> than it looks on the screen and they're like, oh no, <laughs> it looks gross. <laughs> um, and then uh, earlier today, I was here using the podcasting studio with that same close friend um, and that uh, her business is called uh, Patchwork Girl Productions. Um, she's really adorable. And um, Ryan taught us how to use the, uh, the podcasting studio. And I have to tell you that the switchboard is colorful neon lights. And it just made me feel so happy and glowy on the inside. It is very lovely. I was like, oh, it feels so good. Um, what else have I done? Uh, so there's camera equipment if you want to photograph your artwork for reproductions, um, audio equipment. There's like a sound room downstairs if you were wanting yes, to record music. Yes, there is, music. and you can see it later. Um, and then I just love coming here for events every Thursday. I could plug almost any creative uh, organization in town. I can just plug all day. Um, <laughs> so um, every Thursday they have a really cool creative event going on that supports uh, creatives in the community and um, builds community as well with the makerspace here. So I love coming to those and... Um, Andy Epler does some really weird, funny stuff, and I did karaoke one time. If you ever guys want to look that up <laughs> and see me sing. Lots of things are filmed here. Uh -huh. <laughs> this is being filmed it for ends the up record. In the archive. <laughs> Karina, so. let's hop back over to you. Um, what kind of resources do you use here at LPM? Well, I'm so glad you asked. Longmont Public Media is an incredible partner and resource for the Sampo sessions. We host our monthly listening room concert series right here in this room. And LPM members fil film it for broadcast on, um, on public as access TV, which is really an incredible thing for everyone. It's, it's great for LPM, it's great for the Sampo sessions, it's great for the artists to have that video of their whole show to, to use as a resource. In fact, one of our um, artists last year was going to use it for festival and like show submissions. So it's a really great thing um, for the artists and it's just really cool to have that. I think that it's such a, it really enriches the community to to be able to archive our our performances that we have here. Um, and then downstairs, um, Tim, as well as our third SoundPost partner, who could not be here, um, he's also my husband, Zach. Um, he's in LA meeting with music supervisors, so super fancy. He's but a big wig. He is, he is sad he couldn't be here, but they have been working on the downstairs recording studio for um, a while now, several months, maybe a year. Um, 
And so that is a really great resource for people who want to learn more about en music engineering. And uh, the desk down there used to live in my house for many years. Um, Zach actually designed it and had it custom welded. And um, they've been and now it lives in the studio downstairs. Now so you're all invited to go check it out. Now it lives here, and so you're welcome to to push some knobs and learn how to learn how to Pro Tools. That's always fun. Um, and you you guys have also been building sound treatments, and so it's just a it's Longmont Public Media is such a cool space for so many different aspects of media, and just a really, really great place to be. Couldn't agree more. All right, just a, in the, in the uh, few, we have just a couple minutes left here before I'm gonna turn it over to Sergio and the rest of our evening here. Um, one thing from each of you that you want, would like all the other creatives here tonight, one thing to know about LPM. Sarah. LPM, I hate saying this because it's kind of ironic, is in my opinion one of the best kept secrets and the best deals in town. Um, I was kind of hoping it wouldn't get very popular when I was one of the first pioneer members because of all the just this what's available and when so it gets, so you when don't it gets want crowded, people to know about LPM. But when it gets crowded here, <laughs> things get a little more challenging. <laughs> There's only two computers on which I can edit. There's only one studio in which I can record, you know. But um, but it's, to me, like you mentioned, the the 24-hour the hour access is a huge deal. You know, I'm a realtor, and like sometimes I just need a place to go downtown just to have Wi-Fi and to have a cup of coffee and to even meet with a client and to even, like, produce, produce some content. I can do so much here for, like, a really cheap membership each month. Um, and I just really appreciate the Longmont centricity of this place. Like, I'm a Longmont based realtor. I could find a studio like this in Denver or in Boulder, but not only is that a further drive and more expensive, it's just not putting money back into Longmont. And I just really like how the people here are passionate about Longmont and the people I meet want to live and work in Longmont. And so I just really value that piece of things. Quick plug, Sarah Morrow Realtor, please subscribe. Amanda, what would YouTube. you like everyone to know about LPM? Um, it's a fantastic resource. Um, I try to bring my artist friends here all the time, chamber people. Um, when I go to Art Walk and they're like, uh, I don't know how to use Adobe products, I don't have it. They have computers here. It's You can do a paid membership for the 24 access or if you can't afford it, you can come in and use the computers during wor uh, working hours and have full access to the Adobe Suites. Um, and as you mentioned, they're extremely helpful and a really eager, passionate team um, and a very uh, strong group of um, volunteers who were eager to help too. Um, they meet every... Uh, week every Wednesday and um, yeah they're just so fun awesome dorky and um, very passionate people so it's I'm I've told them a few times you might regret uh, inviting an artist to the game <laughs> Um, a lot of them are more um, video and audio engineers and I'm like we're gonna get more artists in here and it's gonna get weird <laughs> so yeah come come infiltrate and hang out with us every Wednesday love it Karina, what do you what do you have to say about LPM? So I've done a little bit of digging, and I have not been able to find any other place in the state of Colorado that is quite like this place. It's very special. It is a very, very like an incredible and unique resource. And I'll just say that like audio recording qu equipment and video recording and film equipment. Black I'll, magic design cameras. Like black magic cameras, those those things are very, very expensive. So to have a place where you can go and learn how to use that gear is like I can't even overstate how important that is for a community with so many creative people and with so many people who want to learn how to do these things. So it's an amazing resource that we have right here in this town. So please take advantage of it. LPM is the best. Stop recording things on your phone. <laughs> yeah. Well, thanks, thanks um, to the three of you. Um, 
Let's have a round of applause for our three 